29 minutes before the hour, the great Tootster himself, Jimmy Toots Holmes, joins us fresh from, uh, uh, are you on the PGA Tour or what? It may be the dog tour, but uh, <laughs> well, me and two or three of my buddies went down to Panama City this past week. Or we left Sunday, played Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and uh, got home about 8 o'clock last night, wore out, more days than one. Uh, me and James Sharbert were partners, and Ronnie Miner and Steve Sawyer just wore us out. Well, there's always next year. But, see, I, I, that was the reason for that. We were staying in, in Ronnie's place down there, and he didn't charge us. So I really felt guilty by going in down there and just whipping him good, you know, by him letting us So stand. you let your guard down a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I just yeah. sort of took it easy on him, just, uh, <laughs> you know, just because he was putting us up. But at any rate, had a great time, uh, but it's good to be back home. Uh, played a lot of golf, uh, seen a lot of people, and eat a lot of seafood. Oh, did I ever! <laughs> uh, this thing called a diet just sort of went out the window. But uh, anyway, had a great time. I bet you missed the Huddle House, though, didn't you? Well, I did. I really did because we, you know, usually on Sunday we eat breakfast out there, and uh, didn't get to go this Sunday. Wednesday, before we go play golf in Columbia, we we eat out there. Ronnie and I do, and didn't get to go this Wednesday, so. Uh, You'll make up for it. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. this weekend we'll patronize them. But anyway, we invite you to go by the Huddle House and uh, see Doug and uh, all the fine staff there, buddy. You won't go away hungry. And by the way, I talked to uh, Nate Brewer the other day. I don't know if he told you this or not. He said he talked to Doug Norton, and uh, he said next year that he would be sitting up here with us per Doug Norton. Oh, wow. So at hey. any rate. It's a power move. I'm telling you, it's got to be a, a big move anyway. You know, the the top-selling item at Huddle House is their signature waffle. They are mm -hmm. delicious. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, I ate a waffle yesterday, and I won't go into where we were at, <laughs> but it didn't compare to the Huddle House and the service. Not even close to being <laughs> what the, uh, you receive at the Huddle House. And, you know, you have to raise your hand and ask for coffee and yeah. all this kind of stuff. But out there at Tuttle House, you don't do that. No. They, uh, they Just take like family care. there. Yes, it is. They know you by name. Yep. Uh, Huddle House uh, sponsors of Toots' Tips. And while you're away, uh, uh, former Sylacog uh, great and uh, Alabama football player Randy Billingsley passed away. Well, uh, you know, Jim, I knew Randy. And I'm not going to say on a personal basis. We've had it. We met. We knew each other. Uh, Randy was a good bit behind me in high school, and I know he played on the state championship team at Sylacauga under Coach Tom Calvin, and the next year I think they were runner-up in the state. So he was just a great individual. Uh, running, uh, uh, he was living down in Mobile, I want to say, some of us to Mobile, Fort, yeah. Yeah, down in uh, South Alabama. But Randy was just a good guy. Uh, I used to fly his airplane. He bought a Cessna 182, and I'd fly him around sometimes just uh, when he wanted to go somewhere. But he was a good guy, and uh, he'll be missed. And uh, I just he played uh, on national championship team, with Coach Bryan at University of Alabama too. Did he really? I'm, I'm yeah. not. And most I'm, valuable player uh, in, in one of the bowl games they played in, or, or most valuable player in the Iron Bowl <laughs> against Auburn one year. So, uh, Randy Billingsley passed away at the age of 61, and uh, services will be in Mobile. We'll update those services for you times for you in just a little while here on daybreak. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Randy before we, he'd hit you. Uh, like I said, I never played against him, but I've watched him on several occasions, especially at high school. Uh, and buddy, he didn't mind uh, putting the bonnet to you. All right, eight and four last week, 47 and 20 overall. Got a lot of picks to get to today, some upsets last mm -hmm. week, and they'll, uh, you know, the top Ten were, went topsy turvy, and Ooh, probably going to see more of that this weekend. What was it last week? It was two, three, three four, yeah. six, all sort of four or five top it. ten teams beaten Ooh, last week. Goodness! And now you've got Ole Miss and Mississippi State tied at number three in the mm -hmm. AP, and something's going to happen this weekend. But let's start with number twenty-five, Stanford hosting Mike Leach and Washington State. Washington State uh, is playing some pretty good football under mm -hmm. Leach, and they've played some really, really close games, even though they've lost a number of those. But they will be at uh, Stanford to take on the Cardinal. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Jim, it's hard to go into Stanford uh, and, and win. 
Uh, I like the Stanford Cardinals. Uh, you know, that's where Tiger Wood went to school. That's where uh, Michelle Wee went to school. Mm -hmm. uh, done pretty well on the golfing scene, but uh, Stanford's got a pretty good football team in the uh, uh, Washington State Cougars, I believe they are. Yep. Uh, will sort of fall to the wayside. All right. Uh, a game that many years ago meant lots more than it does today, but Texas uh, takes on number 11 Oklahoma, and I think that game is played in Dallas, I think. It, yeah, it was played at the old Cotton Bowl, the Red River Rivalry is mm -hmm. what they called it. Uh, Texas, again, I, you know, I think I said this last week, uh, Charlie Strong has really put his foot down to the way his program is going to run. I know he's dismissed about nine people from the football team, which I say kudos to him. Um, but I, I just don't think Texas right now is strong enough to compete with the Oklahoma Sooners, number, no matter where they play. Num number 11, Oklahoma <coughs> over Texas. Uh, 11 o'clock kickoff on CBS on Saturday. Number 13, Georgia at number 23, Missouri. Well, you know, I've seen Missouri, they beat South Carolina, but then, then you turn around on the other hand, Indiana goes into uh, Columbus and beats Missouri. Uh, so I don't know. I like the Georgia Bulldogs. They've got a pretty good football team, and it just depends on uh, which girly shows up that runs the football. Uh, Cincinnati, Tommy Tuberville's mm -hmm. Cincinnati Bearcats down in South Florida take on Miami, and Miami's had a lot of issues mm -hmm. with uh, – uh, the NCAA and uh, Cincinnati uh, up and coming with uh, Tommy Tuberville at the Hams. What do you think about that one? Well, uh, first and foremost, I don't like Tommy Tuberville. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm I'll quote you on that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go with the uh, Hurricanes of Miami. You'd go with them. Uh, if they were playing uh, Podunk Tech, I would holler go whatever they might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take Miami over Cincinnati, West Virginia, mm -hmm. and uh, the what are they? West Virginia Mountaineers, Mountaineers. Uh, team that Alabama beat <laughs> in the Chick Fil A doubleheader earlier in the season. They play at Lubbock and Texas Tech. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, Texas Tech has been a surprise, but I'm going to tell you the Mountaineers in Morgantown play pretty good on the road, sort of iffy. Uh, but I'm going to have to stay with the uh, – I like the guy that shoots the old uh, musket and all that kind of right. stuff. So West Virginia. For whatever reason, I'm, I like the, the uh, Mountaineers. Probably the premier game in the country is number two Auburn at number three Mississippi State. The uh, uh, game day crew from ESPN is there. Uh, it is said to be the biggest game in the history of Mississippi State. Oh, there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, this is the second week in a row that the game day crew has been in the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They play some pretty good football over. I think the early odds say Auburn is a two-and-a-half point favorite. And I'm probably going to get chewed out good. But I, I'm telling you, be careful, Auburn, Mississippi State, and a mild upset. Wow. And like I hate the, them. I hate uh, to, to, uh, uh, to going against that. your beloved Tigers. Yes, I am. I, I'm just uh, what I've seen. Of, I hope I'm wrong. Boy, I'll, I'll take a wrong on that one and be extremely happy. But I've just seen Mississippi State play. They are a well polished football mm -hmm. team. They're huge. Uh, their quarterback is he's just. Well, they doing, have the biggest offensive line yeah, in America. Yeah, in football. Oh wow! Bar none, pro, college, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, they they got a pretty good football team over there. Another top ten matchup, number nine TCU, as at number five Baylor. Baylor Bears, no question. Good football team. Uh, uh, watched them play a little television the other night, and they, these cats are for real, too. So. so TCU beat Oklahoma last yeah, week. Okay. That won't happen this week. Okay. Baylor Bears. Baylor Bears. All right. Uh, number 12 Oregon at number 18 UCLA. Well, I'm going to tell you, you bet them Ducks is going to be mad. Uh, they've probably been floating around out there doing a lot of quacking and all this kind of business. But they'll be mad after what happened to them last week. I like the uh, quack attack and the Oregon Ducks. Two unranked teams, but teams that uh, a lot of people had high aspirations for. Louisville at Clemson. You know, Jim, I've had some mixed emotions about Clemson. Uh, I've seen them play so well against Florida State. They had that ball game won, let it slip away. Uh, but at any rate, though, uh, Dabo Sweeney is a good coach, and he's got those kids headed in the right direction. 
and uh, the Louisville Cardinals with their new first year coach. But I like the Clemson Tigers. Can you say Bobby Petrino? Bobby Petrino. <laughs> Without getting upset, no. <laughs> uh, uh, a matchup of uh, two teams from the same state, the Volunteer State. Tennessee Volunteers have lost some very close games. They lose to Florida 10-9. Uh, they played <laughs> Georgia uh, to the finish uh, in Athens a few weeks ago. They host the Chattanooga Moccasins Saturday at Nayland Stadium. Won't be a contest, and I'm going to go back to the Florida game and the Georgia game. Uh, Tennessee had Florida beat. The jury's still out on how, how good the Florida Gators are. But uh, I remember a guy that used to coach down at uh, Chattanooga. His name was Scrappy Moore. Who? Scrappy oh, Moore okay. was the head coach years ago. And I remember when Coach Jordan, they, they would come in and play Auburn, and he would always say that uh, the coach would bring in a Scrappy <laughs> Moccasin football team. And they played Auburn one time down in Auburn, made them 13-7. to but at any rate, back to Tennessee, uh, I'm telling you, uh, Coach Jones has done an outstanding job over there. Give, him, give the volunteers another couple of years, maybe, and you'll see them ranked up there in the top five or so. I like Tennessee at home. Well, some folks are saying the mocks have catching <laughs> Tennessee at the right time, but you go with Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Number seven, Alabama, coming off a disheartening loss uh, to Ole Miss, now travel to play the Arkansas Razorbacks, and that's not a gimme right there. No, it is not, but uh, Alabama's going to be upset. They're going to be mad. Uh, the Hogs, uh, ever since they – Auburn, they, you know, they opened up with Auburn, and Auburn beat them, but uh, ever since then they've been playing some pretty good football. Mm -hmm. But they hadn't played the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm going with the Nick Saban buttons to rebound. You know, I heard one uh, – color analysts say this week that it, it's not that Alabama is bad. Mm -hmm. He said the rest of the Southeastern Conference is catching up, and well, Arkansas is one of those teams. They are, uh, Jim, and again, they, they open up the season with a loss down at Jordan-Hare, but since then they've been playing well. And it's, it's a shame that the best conference in college football is here in the Southeastern Conference. The, especially the SEC West, those teams are ranked. What you got Alabama ranked, Auburn ranked, the Ole Miss ranked, Mississippi State ranked, all in the West. And uh, it's going to be a shame because they're going to beat up on one another, and somebody with a great football team is not going to get in. Yeah. Two teams that uh, are going different directions, opposite directions. Uh, Penn State, uh, uh, after uh, a devastating uh, penalty from the NCAA and a lot of stuff going on at Penn State with Jerry Sandusky and the death of uh, uh, Joe Paterno, Joe Paterno uh, plays Michigan. Now, uh, Brady Hoke. He's in trouble. He is in real trouble. Yeah. Uh, the fans aren't coming to watch Michigan play at the big house. Well, I'll tell you, when you don't have the 106,000 or whatever that place holds somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, something's wrong, and you can bet that uh, they'll be in search of a new coach come the end of the year. Uh, Penn State, the jury's still out on them. I don't know. Uh, but Michigan just hasn't played well at all. I'm going to have to go with the Nittany Lions to upset them in the big house. LSU unranked at Florida unranked. <laughs> First time LSU's not been ranked in um, many, many years. Many, many years. Uh, the Bengal Tigers. They go to the swamp and get it done. Florida, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Jim, and I just don't think Florida's the football team that all these prognosticators came up with. Think most champs in trouble? Uh, well, I don't know. They may be lenient with him, give him another year, but uh, the folks in Florida does not like what is going on now with their Gators. You know, when Steve Spurrier righted that ship and got it going in the right direction, people fell in love with Florida football, and, and since then, <clears throat> they've won some games, but... Uh, uh, Muschamp has just not done – to say he's a great head coach, he's not. This is, I think it's his mm -hmm. first year to be a head football mm -hmm. coach, or his first time, I should say. So a uh, defensive coordinator, outstanding. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Florida's – they just lack something, and I, I can't put my finger on it. But uh, they just don't have a real good football team right now. Number three, Ole Miss – at number 14, Texas A&M. Watch this one. Yeah, better watch this one. Uh, you know, I, and I'm going to be honest with you, if Ole Miss, after a very, very emotional win against a bitter rival, the Alabama Crimson Tide, 
Uh, did they burn it all up? Will it go in flat? I think so. I think Texas A&M will get them in College Station where the 12th man resides. Uh, I, just, I just can't see them playing on that emotional level uh, that many weeks in a row. Finally, uh, Rich Rodriguez and the Arizona Wildcats. Uh, they knocked off the other team that knocked did. off Oregon, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and they host Southern Cal, a team that lost last week mm -hmm. as well. Southern Cal's got a lot of talent, though. Well, they do, and, uh, you know, Lane Kippen, the offensive coordinator at the University of Alabama, was there last year and didn't do exactly what they thought that he, he should do. But uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, the Arizona Wildcats played very, very well against Oregon. They had to to beat them. Will they come in with a little flat spot? I think they will. I like uh, the SEC Tro USC Trojans. Uh, Rich Rodriguez is smiling. Absolutely. The demise of Michigan mm -hmm. after they ousted him. Yeah, you know, he went from West Virginia to Michigan, and boy, mm -hmm. he'd done a great job when he was over at uh, West Virginia, but uh, then he goes over to Michigan, and they sort of fall flat of their face, and the folks up there in Ann Arbor, they're not too fond of losing either. <laughs> but. Uh, after the Ohio State game, I promise you the coach will be hunting him a place to go. Toots' tips brought to you by the Huddle House, 47 and 20 overall, 8 and 4 last week, and 14 picks today. We'll see how the Tootster uh, makes I'm, his way through this weekend. If I miss one, I sure hope it's a Mississippi State Auburn game. Yeah, I'm surprised you picked against. Well, your you know, I know you're not going to believe this, but I just had a vision last night while I was laying there trying to sleep. Uh, Auburn it wasn't is, a spiritual vision, was it? Well, it was a vision saying that I think that old uh, Mississippi State's going to upset Auburn and start well, at Scott Field, by the way. Uh, so I, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm telling you, Mississippi State is for real. I said that uh, from the outset. They, the, I think the SEC is going to go through Startle. Can Arkansas upset Alabama? No. Alabama, I think if they throw the ball, Alabama's uh, DB's have been a little suspect. You know, the, the kid from Ole Miss just lit him up, lit him up. But uh, I think Nick Saban will have him ready to go, and I just think uh, Alabama will win. All right. At the Huddle House, a sponsor of Toots' Tips. And I know you want to uh, take a moment to invite people to dine at the Huddle House. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, my wife and I and my daughter, my daughter's coming home this weekend, so we'll probably be out there sometime Sunday morning. Y'all come by and uh, tell Doug that we sent you by. and. Uh, who knows what might do for you. Might give you a free cup of coffee or something. There you but go. At any rate, so we invite you to go by and see uh, all the fine folks. Uh, Wakia, that's a great server out there. Uh, Portia, Tammy, Kelly. I can go on and on, but they just do an outstanding job um, at the Huddle House. And uh, the winds of change are blowing, possibly, yeah. with the, uh, the Toots and Nate show. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something now. Uh, Good. I mean, Great. you have an okay dad. No, 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 no. It, it's yeah. not. It's not in concrete yet. But uh, now he told me. He did tell me. He talked to Doug, and Doug said it would be me and him next year, which uh, they might be a fight up here about predicting football games. You know what? He probably knows much about it as I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again next week. Touches tips brought to you by the Huddle House. Uh, Eleven minutes before the hour. More on daybreak coming up right after.